Hi, welcome back to Lovely Gardening Bits. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but this on me is sun. There is a big yellow ball up in the sky that we haven't seen in weeks. And it's just so nice, it's like the perfect temperature. Now it's supposed to get like really breezy later. I don't know why I start off my videos with like a weather forecast. It's just what we do. But I hope you had a lovely week in the garden and you got lots of bits done. Um, to me, it boggles my brain that like we're almost halfway through August. I feel like this year is going so fast when it comes to the growing season. And Catherine and I we were only talking about it there the other day that it feels like, okay, well, this season's finished. Even though it's not, like it's really not. We've so much more that we can still be doing in the garden. I've realized that I've missed going to the garden center. I know because um, she and I were both doing this thing called the Artist Way. We're supposed to help you get like back in touch with your creativity and um, there's like a whole kind of community around it as well. So you do like your morning pages, which is three pages of a conscious stream of writing. So whatever comes into your head, it comes out onto the table, onto the table, onto the notebook. Um, and then you're supposed to bring yourself on an artist date every week. And I was trying to like make a list of things that I wanted to do and I've done a couple of them now. But I was like, you know, it'd be great. An artist date for me to like spark my creativity would be to go to the garden center. But I know if I go, I'll end up spending a small fortune or a large fortune. Because you know? I am afraid to kind of total up everything that I've spent um, in the garden this year. And then like, the garden looks great. It just looks a bit untidy, a bit messy because I haven't been out in it just like with the weather. And I don't want to spend much more money on it kind of this year. I think the only thing that I really have set like budget aside for is um, our bulbs, spring bulbs. So I'm currently in the research part of that where I'm trying to figure out what bulbs I want, what I'm going to do differently compared to last year and like they're not even in the shops yet. I'd say it'd be like September, October by the time they're in but anyway that gives me plenty of time. I'm already in the like thinking ahead for like next year um, in terms of like seeds, which I'm not going to buy many, if any, and plants. You know me whenever I go to the garden centre, I just buy what I like and then I hope for the best. But there are a few plants like here and like over in the border, just kind of dotted around that I would like more of, but don't want to spend the money. Now, <clears throat> what I will say is I do want to buy a Ridgeron. What? Hold on. Erigeron Carvins, Carvinskianus. So it's the Erigeron, it's like the daisies, but that are white and pink. So when I went to the garden center um, a couple of months, a few months ago now at this point, they only had like a purple variation. Now it looked pink on the, the little label on the front and I planted them out, but they're too big. Like they're too tonky. But I want something like a little bit more delicate because you know the barrels that, it's terrible. The barrels that Catherine and I bought months ago, I still have them sitting down um, by the house because I know what I want to do with them now, but they're still sitting there. <laughs> it's terrible. But what I'm thinking is, imagine even like a couple of the barrels full of that Erigeron and over the years like they'll self seed, they'll spread, they'll get bigger and bigger. So I think what I might do this weekend is go get some Erigeron. But in the meantime, I'm going to attempt to do more cuttings and propagation. Now I did this last year, I attempted to anyway. I tried to do salvia amistad and lavender. <laughs> Not one took at all. Then this year I've discovered Anya the Garden Fairy. I will leave her channel linked below. So she uploads on Instagram, but then she uploads her Instagrams as shorts here on YouTube. But I leave her Instagram linked. I just think it's easier to follow people there. But I've just been watching her videos and she's so much like her whole garden is propagated. She has like a white hydrangea hedge that's propagated. Her lavender propagated. So I was like, what can I propagate or what can I get free plants with? So I have a list. Okay. Um, so if you would like to try this along with me, fabulous. I don't know if it's going to work. So I'm going to do the hydrangeas. The salvias, the salvia amistad, if I can, lavender. Oh yeah, the guar, guara, guarda. See that little, the white plant. I think it's there. That's in front of the mirror. I love it, and I think I should be able to propagate that. Um, catmint as well. Well, 
when it comes to propagating i probably will just divide the catmint but my mom is big into propagation so is her sister and so like a lot of the times they'll just cut something off a plant that they have give it to each other then they come home and then they stick it in a pot and hope for the best and to be honest like nine times out of ten they take last week i showed uh, rose cuttings that mom had done they've taken so just trying to be i suppose a little bit more frugal a little bit more mindful says she who was already planning a garden center day with Catherine. I'm just gonna experiment and gonna see what happens, see what works. I have that rooting hormone powder that I bought a few weeks ago, so I'm gonna give that a go. But if you want to give it a go with me, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we can get some free plants. But I'm gonna put the hair up because it's starting to get windy and let's get propagating. I think I'm gonna stick some music on while I do it because it's been a while since I've done that. delightful i just had my spotify playlist on and i did my cuttings so so these are the ones these are hydrangea cuttings this one here was from a plant like a different plant so all these smaller ones are from the front but that has the most blooms whereas this one is from the side of the house and um, it doesn't get as much sunlight god the leaves actually feel different as well a bit more textured anyway so let's see what happens it says um anya says to keep them out of direct light so i'll try and do that and then this is the guara, guara plant i could only find three like little stems everything else had blooms on them and then i did these as well so these are russian sage i really like them that actually smells gorgeous when i was taking off the excess leaves that's this one here so cool that'd be nice now i probably will have to prune that back that looks quite woody now also when it comes to trying to save money seeds are the way to go as well so these are my foxglove seeds and oh you can see that they're quite dry here i'd say can't really hear them now, these ones look open so what ideally will happen is the seeds will kind of intersperse down here but I think what I'll do anyway is save some seeds and when I weed this border which I will do and um, I'll probably do that this weekend I won't don't think I'll film it because it'll be boring to watch but I think I'll sow more 
foxglove seeds and I'll do maybe snapdragon seeds as well because foxgloves are biennials so these flowers from this plant like this plant won't flower next year it will the following year see this pink geranium that just seems to have taken over it looks really nice on camera but it's too much so I think when I weed this weekend I'm going to divide it I'll see if Joanne and Will wants any I'll see if Catherine wants any I think she has some already but it's just it's taken over it's given great ground cover which is good and that will help keep the moisture in it all looks the same do you know what I mean there's no kind of variation love that dandelion right in the middle when it comes to plants like the Achillea here so I have like the pink one and then I have like the terracotta one over the far side I'll show you now in a second you don't propagate these but you can they, these are perennial so they'll come back next year but if you just divide them in the spring that's what I did with these yellow ones that look demented yeah this border is getting a makeover for next year it's just it's too wild I think I took two or three of the Achillea plants out so the Achillea are these ones here these ones here so they start off they start off like that with the orange hue to it and then and then they turn into like different kind of hues of yellow they're really nice hello I will say as much as the verbena is absolutely huge the bees the butterflies love them what I'm thinking for next year is moving them up behind the veg beds because I have like a little bit of room behind those beds so that it will help like encourage the pollinators and then just give me a bit of space I feel like I need to seriously plan out this border so much better I'm trying to decide whether to do a cutting of this rose bush as well I feel like it would need a lot of care I'm going to look into that more I did look at um, Anya's video and she was saying about doing them about doing cuttings but I just think having maybe three of these rose bushes would be fab see here this plant here looks really wispy so in a few weeks this will be a sea of kind of purple daisies this is the carlo aster takes over a lot again a perennial but it's lovely but i think what i'll do for next year is maybe divide it up and separate them so I have like repeating patterns going up the border i'm going to take up this grass i'm going to move that that's what'll keep me busy now over kind of autumn and winter and spring is planning this bed actually i wanted to show you this so I'm gonna send Catherine actually a video of this because if you know, you know, it's her fave. <laughs> um, if you watched our first chatty video, I think it was on Catherine's channel or was it mine? I'm not sure. Um, she hates begonias. Sorry, I wanted to show you this speaking of cuttings. So a few weeks ago, my mom came back from her sister's with this little fuchsia cutting and it's after taking. She just got it, shoved it in there and it's after working. I don't know where I'll put these plants if they take, but I do need to now put like take them out of the direct sun. I love the fact that we have direct sun to take them out of. Um, so I'm thinking I might put them down in that corner between like the wall and uh, um, the shed that doesn't get any like, direct sun. So we'll see if they actually take. Now I'm not <laughs> gonna just show you this. So this is already happening. Now this happened to all of the salvia amistats last year. So we'll see. Any advice on propagation, cuttings, dividing plants, anything like that, please leave them in the comments below. Um, or if there's anybody else online who you follow who does it well or explains it really well, because I'm just learning too. And if you fancy doing cuttings to like do along with me, sure we'll see if it works or not. One more pot of compost that I could put cuttings in. I want to try and do the pelargoniums, so like the neon pink ones that I have, but they're being completely overshadowed by everything. I think I'll try that. I need to look at Anya and see what she said again. Sorry, before I do that, look, my little sunflowers are opening. If you've ever wondered what a sunflower looks like before it opens, it's that. These are so cute. And then as well, I have, what them things called? Dahlias. These ones here. I feel like these are from last year. No, there's nothing in there that I can take a cutting from um, for the pelargoniums. That's what this is. But I just realized, look here. So see here, these are little corms. These are the calendula seeds. So that's one there. It's gorgeous. These are annuals. So 
whatever seeds kind of fall out of here and here go down and then they'll come back next year so just to keep an eye out so these ones are quite so these ones are quite fresh see the way they're still green so you want to wait that's not quite oops they're not quite ready yet but you want them to be dry and they look like they come off like really easily they look like little like little snails remember these climbing nasturtiums that I cut back last week they're wild still but keep an eye out for these so that's like a fresh seed they'll go brown again and dry they'll drop and because like the leaves are so distinctive even if they do drop you'll be able to find it and pick it out you know if you if, if let's say like a bird or something takes it or if the wind blows it away and it ends up in a place that you don't want it to be sorry look at my tomatoes oh i'm very excited now this time last year we were already harvesting the tomatoes just wanted to show you here as well so see this pink flower that's snapdragon or aranthinum is the fancy name and those are little seed pods there actually let me go around so all these are seed pods so they're still quite fresh and green so we're not going to take them off yet let them dry they'll fall down oh actually are those the seeds of the candelabra primula i don't know what it's supposed to look like I'm going to Google that and see. There's quite like a fresh looking one. So they must dry out as well. Oh look. There seems to be more there. I'm looking forward to them hopefully self-seeding. And then we've got more seeds here from the Crocosmia. So they start off with being like a green and juicy. But as the season goes on you'll see that they turn brown and go dry. The birds can either take them or you can like save. Like you can see how many plants you'll be able to get out of like a couple of stems so you don't have to like save them all but some for you some for the birds happy days my little strawberry cutting from last week is doing good as is that one in there and you can see that there is another little string coming up and there'll be another potential plant there <laughs> these are like wild strawberry plants that mom had we didn't get any strawberries from them this year but i think what i'll do is um that just made a liar of me <laughs> But I think I'm going to like take out all the compost from these different pots and replenish them. Just so they have like new nutrients. Oh, the hair is down. Looks wild. But I hope my cuttings take hold. I hope that they do what I would like them to do in that they give me free plants. Anyway, I'd love your input to see what you're going to do cuttings of, what you're going to propagate or divide to give me inspiration and to give everybody else watching the video inspiration as well because yeah. I feel like as a gardener sometimes you're kind of going oh my god where's all my money gone and then you're like oh yeah it's all there so if we can save money by collecting seeds or by doing our cuttings like that or propagating all the best and if they don't work we've just wasted a little bit of compost we can use that for something else but I'm going to sign off for now I'll see you in next week's video and have a gorgeous week whatever you're doing okay bye